president of the Carlton Football Club, Mr. Ian Rice. Thanks, Louis. Ian, uh, have you ever felt this washed out before in your life? Can't believe it. It must be like running a marathon. Unbelievable the feeling. You know, the whole year, the blood, sweat and tears, the grind, moulding new players into the side, new coach and the fact that the boys just moulded together and the tremendous mateship that emanated from every player and it was spearheaded by some terrific champions and it wasn't a fantastic but Brucey duel. You know, a champion of champions to take it out. Two years ago you took over as caretaker president at a time of great strife in the club's history. You're still here, they've got a cap on the mantelpiece and they've equal Collingwood's record. Well, this is what football is all about. You know, nobody, nobody could believe the feeling that to think all that turmoil two years ago and the new administration, new financial structure, addition of four or five great recruits, each one a terrific winner, and here we are in the MCG with the flag. You know, what more can you say? Well, thank you, Ian Ross. I'm sure there'll be plenty more to say a little later on in the evening. Back to you, Louis. Thanks very much, uh, Stephen. There's the Clark uh, mobile crane shot uh, for Channel 7. And, of course, not as crowded as it was. A lot of Collingwood... Uh, Collingwood point, supporters going home disappointed and we waited 23 years now we've got to wait 24 and those boys from Channel 7 up there on the cranes have certainly done a marvellous job let's go down now to Jack uh, Edwards in the Carlton dressing rooms and he's talking to the victorious coach uh, David Parker well David Parker congratulations premiership coach for 1981 I know you haven't had time to collect your thoughts but what's the immediate feeling I think, as Norma, Jack, just a big relief. I think from a coaching point of view, particularly when you know you've got the players, and I, I knew that, uh, that we had the best group of players, and then I thought we might take a tumble at the finish, and that would have been very sad, because they did a lot of work, and we, we got the short cut in, and then to have lost it after that would have been very sad. But the, what, the manner what was done, probably, Jack, was as, uh, was as pleasing as the end result. Third quarter, you must have been very worried. Collingwood seemed to control most of that third quarter. You got two goals yes, very late in the quarter. Yeah, I think we kicked two at the end of the quarter, which gave us a chance, and then we kicked the first two or three at the start of the last quarter. And I thought if we were round about, then we had enough in us. I knew we had lots of fitness and lots of running in our legs if we were close enough to do it. And, I, and we got a bit of momentum, and I think then Collingwood found it very hard. They've worked so hard, Jack, to get there it was going to be difficult for them to find something if we actually headed them, and uh, that, that was the way it worked what out. What you're saying, your one-week spell must have stood you in good stead in the field. Oh, because you've got fit players to start with, Jack. You know, there was no doubt about our running. Our capacity to run was going to be good. We kept that up. But we had players who went onto the ground, not carrying injuries, uh, eager to do the job, and, and fresh, a fresh approach. And I think that's more difficult when you've come the hard way, as Colling would have done. I know you don't like to individualise, but... I thought your skipper's game, Fitzpatrick and Bruce Still, they played fantastic games of football. Yes, so uh, we, we really did. I know, I know you did. But Michael, since he broke his hand, Bones, just before the Essendon game, and few people realised that he was in a dreadful state as a, uh, uh, in his own mind. He had a hand that he couldn't put pressure on the ball, and he didn't want to let the team down from a leadership or a playing point of view. He went out that day and was best man on the ground, and I think... Talk about man, know thyself. I think from that, for, that moment forward, Michael has been the best leader in the competition. And he's carried it right through the finals and the important games leading up to it. And I think uh, he, more than any other one player, showed the way for the rest. And, of course, the experience of Bruce Dool in the back half, uh, I think it was justly rewarded with the medal. The loss of English must have been a problem at the time. It was because we'd, had, we'd, we'd shifted Harms and McConville and that had worked for us. And then having to take Harms actually back out of the play was a bit of a disappointment. But and Dares have been a good player. Dares English has been uh, superb over the last few weeks. And I thought we might have trouble covering that because it took McConville out of the forward line who was starting to show a bit too. But the job McConville did on, uh, on Kink. Renee Kink was fantastic. Very good, yeah. And then we took a bit of a risk to change Harms and Kink because when the game was even, we had to do something. And that worked for a short period of time and then we were forced because of the English business to, uh, to, to re restructure the side. Thank you very much, David. I'll let you get back to your team and congratulations once again. Thanks very much, Brian. Thanks very much, David. Once again, the final scores in the 1981 Grand Final. Carlton have won this match by 20 points. Carlton, 12 goals, 20-92. To Collingwood, uh, 10 goals, 12-72. Premiers for 1981. So that just about wraps it up from the MCG, which is starting to empty out now. A crowd of around about 110,000 people, I would say. So on behalf of uh, camera crew, uh, the boys that did such a marvellous job today, and I think you'll agree with a, a spectacular telecast. Our commentators, uh, Peter Landy and Bobby Skilt, not forgetting our statistician, Paul Todd, and everybody connected, our uh, 
producer back there at Channel 7 and the crew he's got working there, Gordon Bennett. We'd like to say farewell to the Melbourne Cricket Ground and we certainly hope that you stay with us again next year. So this is Lou Richards signing off. From Seven Sports.